Hey guys and welcome to another Katia V5 tutorial. This one is following on from the 3D Geometry Part 1 which was making the A-frame. Today we're going to make a strut, an aerospace strut. Um, so with that we're going to be predominantly using shafts, grooves, uh, ribs, as well as some boolean operations as well. Now before we start you can see I've already got a few sketches already laid out. Uh, and on the left on the design tree I've set it out a little bit differently this time. So this time I've set it out with two geometrical sets. So if you remember when you start a part you have the option to create a geometrical set. This is what they are. And what they are is essentially a place to put all of your 2D and 1D entities, i.e. your sketches, your points and your lines. So nothing solid can exist in a geometrical set. It's only there essentially for reference. And this is quite useful because it allows you to organize everything a bit better. So when you get to big parts, it becomes much more manageable to actually put it into uh, smaller smaller sets. And it also doesn't get aggregated to the part body. And what that means is if you create something like a solid, uh, it doesn't actually mean that if you delete something in the part body or delete something in your geometrical set automatically. So you have to, it, it basically cuts the link a little bit between uh, what you make as a solid and what you make in a sketch. So we'll just take a quick look at our sketches then just so you can see what I've done. Uh, as you can see, they're in halves. So when you make a shaft, you, you're you going to be revolving it round, essentially. So what you need to do is you put an axis system. It's quite important you put an axis over here, down the centre, as this will let Katia know that that's what you want to revolve it round. It's not essential, it just makes it much, much easier. Uh, and the second one, just to show you, is how it's laid out. Now I want to show you guys something as well, which is uh, a very, very cool thing to know that when you're doing something like this and say you've got a load of stuff in the background so I've got I've got quite a few things in the background there and I want to make sure that I've got the correct thing to constrain it to so if I press down on the keypad as I'm hovering over something what it will do is it will go through the layers so as you can see here there are five things that I'm pointing on here so I've got the, the absolute axis system, I've got uh, a different sketch but I want to make sure that it's this sketch right here. So I click there, I can ensure that I get the correct part. Now this works on drafting, it works on sketching, it works on a lot of things. It just does help you uh, keep track of what exactly you want to, um, to constrain things to. Okay, so what we're going to be doing then is we're going to be creating the heads and the shaft in two different bodies. So over here as well, you can see I've got a part body and I've got a different body called N. So to do this, or to, or to create a geometrical set in itself, all you have to do is go insert body or geometrical set. In this case, we're going to go body. You'll see it's been made there. I go properties, just change it. Uh, let's call it the shaft. So what we want to do is we want to create these heads in two different and the shaft in two different bodies because then what it's going to let us do is it's going to put it together in the end. So if we go right click and go define in worked object, that'll make sure that when we create something it'll go into that part body and that's quite important as well. So we select our um, our shaft icon. It comes up like this as you would expect as normal. So it's exactly the same as for example pads or pockets. You've got a first angle in which you can revolve it round, and you've got a second one if you don't want to make a complete revolution. Default, of course, is 360. So we'll choose our profile. Because I've got an axis in there, it has allowed me to just uh, revolve it immediately. So if you want to make it as a shell, you can choose that by selecting the thick profile. But in this case, we're not going to. So click OK. And there's our first shaft. So we're then going to create the uh, the body for the shaft. So what we're going to do is make sure that we put that into the uh, in work object. So we're going to then, as again, use the shaft, select the profile, and because we've got an axis in there, it does it right nice and neatly. Boom, done. So you can see that the uh, both shafts are nice and neatly done. So now what I'm going to show you is uh, we're going to trim off the edges here. So if I put that back into the in work object, what I'm going to do is I don't want a round ball for my uh, for my end pinion. Uh, I want a, a flat edge. So what I'm going to do is instead of pocketing it, 
I'm going to split it. So if I create a plane, so I'm going to create a plane. Now this is one of the things where you can do thousands of different things with these planes, with these here. But at the moment I'm going to keep it nice and simple and I'm going to keep it offset from a plane. So the plane I'm going to choose is my uh, ZY plane and I'm going to offset it by 20 millimeters. And I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side. So now I've got two planes and that's going to define my uh, my faces. So if I choose the split icon, which is in underneath thickness, split, and what I can do is it will sp split gives you very, very little options because it, all it does is literally split a body in half or whichever plane you choose. So you can select uh, a plane, you can select the face, you can select a surface. Uh, depending on what you want to do, you can select anything really to actually split it as long as it's 2D. So if you select a plane, you'll see an arrow point out and that what it's basically saying is I'm going to keep everything from that plane in that direction. So if I select OK, it will cut it all away, which we don't want. Actually, what we want to do is put the other way. So we click on the arrow. Boom. Nice and easy. Click it again on that one. Done. So now we've got our end bit, which is nice and faced off. Now you'll notice when I did that, this, although it's actually thicker, was not touched by it. If this shaft was in that body, in the body, in the same body as this, it would also be split by it, which we don't want. So by utilizing two different bodies, you can actually uh, create much, much more complex uh, components, but uh, much, much easier to do. Okay, so we've got our shaft and we've got our head. Now you'll notice as I've done this, we have obviously the splits, we've got the shafts, and the sketches have stayed with their respective uh, geometrical sets. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to make a hole in this face here. Again, we're going to position it so it's uh, it's where you want it, and what we want it, we want it in line with the origin. So we'll make a constraint to make a coincident. We'll choose up to next to put it all the way through, like that. And we'll have it as a diameter of 25. And there's our end. OK, so we've got our hold in the, uh, in, our, in the end now. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to do a groove. Uh, and the way I've done this is I've already pre, uh, prepared a sketch which you can find uh, right down here. So it's quite small. Uh, and what we want to do is, is instead of creating a brand new sketch, I want to use this sketch, but I want to position it elsewhere. So if in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the rib sketch, go down to the bottom with a rib object and change the sketch support. And you'll notice that uh, this is exactly the same as when you do the position sketch icon. And it is exactly the same, only it allows it, you to do it for a, uh, an existing sketch rather than a, an, a brand new sketch. So we're going to choose positioned. I'm going to position it onto the uh, YZ plane, if it will let me. We're going to choose it as a projection point, And I'm going to use this body sketch here. And I'm going to position it just here. And I'm going to have the orientation to make sure that it's aligned with the Z axis, i.e. going down like that. And I'll make sure it is the V direction so that it is correctly uh, orientated, just like that. So it's slightly going into it and it's slightly popping out, a bit like a pocket. So now we're going to create a groove. And because we are currently uh, in hole one for a defined work object, we're then going to go to shaft and we're going to define that as the in work object. Otherwise, nothing would happen. So I'm going to create a groove now. Um, and a groove to a shaft is the same as a pocket to a pad, pretty much. So exactly the same, only one revolves and the other doesn't. So you can see it's exactly the same as a shaft dialog box. If we choose the rib sketch and I choose the shaft as the axis, you'll see that it has created uh, this here. So click OK. And there we go, we've got a groove right in the center, lovely job. So to, uh, to continue on with something we were doing last time, I'm going to just quickly show you the rectangular pattern. 
so if you want to rectangular rectangularly pattern something, you've got this dialog box which comes up. So you've got the first direction and the second direction like you do with most things here. Uh, and you've also got several different parameters so you can specify how many you want and the length between them, the total length. You can have uh, how many you want and the spacing between them. You have a spacing between them and uh, the overall length and the instance and unequal spacing. So there's different ways you can do and I would recommend you have a play with this. Uh, so we're just going to use an a, a instance and spacing in this because it's quite easy. So our reference direction and our current uh, object to pattern haven't been defined yet. So we're going to choose our uh, groove as the object to pattern. And our reference element, i.e. in which direction we can choose is, uh, we can either choose an axis or in this case we can just choose the Z axis. Now you notice I've got six instance instances uh, at a spacing of 20 millimeters. I can reverse it. And I'll show you the differences between each one. So you just essentially each of these get blocked out uh, depending on which ones you want to do. So we're going to choose instances and spacing. Click OK. And there we go. We've got several grooves going down there. Now, of course, if I wanted to um, change where the sketch was originally, I can still go back to my original um, sketch with the rib. Right click, go to Object, change the sketch support, and instead of the, uh, the origin there, I'm going to choose the center point. So I'm going to use a, a middle point, and I'm going to choose that one there. OK, and it moves everything down from it. If you remember, obviously, if you define the in work object, depending on what you define, it may go backwards in time as such. OK, so now we've got our shaft and we've got the uh, one end. So what we're going to do now is make the other. Uh, so we're going to mirror this as we did with the last one. But before we mirror, we've got nothing to mirror it round. So I'm going to make a plane first. So I'm going to select my ends uh, geometrical set, create a plane. And what we're going to do is I'm going to use normal to curve. So I'm going to choose the curve for the shaft, because now I know that that is in the absolute center of the shaft itself. So when I rotate, uh, mirror it round, it's going to be just where I need it. Click OK. Choose your uh, defining worked object for the end, and then you can then mirror it round. So mirror it round that plane we just made. Appears just there. Boom. There we have it. Now you'll notice at this point here, what we usually try and do is the dress ups, i.e., the fillets. So but if I try and do a fillet on this part here, so this face to that face, if I select as I would this edge here, it needs to be in the current body, obviously, so uh, that's fine. It's just selected it for us. If I go to uh, Inward Object, like so, you'll notice that it doesn't want to actually go from that surface to that surface. It just wants to uh, do the end and that's because they're in two different bodies like we said so before we do that we need to add these two together with boolean operations so if anyone's familiar with coding a boolean operation uh, is just a yes or a no generally uh, and it's pretty much similar in this case only it's things like add it remove it uh, or put it together so in this case what we're going to use is the assemble uh, you do have other ones such as add, remove, and uh, union trim. Those are generally the ones you use. So if we select assemble, what you're going to do is you're going to you read it across. So we're going to assemble the ends part body to the shaft part body. Okay, and then you'll notice that the body has disappeared. It's gone into an operation here, and it exists in there. So this also helps it keep uh, nice and neat because we've just got this, we've just uh, taken an entire body and put it into one node on the tree. And what you can also do then is you can do it again and assemble shaft part body. You'll notice in that uh, particular case, it did it automatically because there was only one other body to actually assemble it to. So now if we go and do the dress up features, click on there, there you have it nice and easy. Okay, so that's our finished model then. 
So we've ended up with a full strut, uh, but we've managed to make it nice and neat within the actual design tree. Uh, and we've kept everything within geometrical sets. Make sure you hide them, uh, it keeps it nice and neat within assemblies. So this pretty much wraps up the 3D modeling part, or the basics of it anyway. We'll be moving on to 2D surface and wireframing next, and we'll also be learning how to integrate 2D and 3D modeling uh, with each other. So as always, if you do have any questions or comments, uh, please do leave them down below, uh, and please do tune in for the next set of tutorials uh, on Katia V5. Thanks for watching. Cheerio.